everybody welcome to another video on the six edition tyranid tactics yes we have an exciting one big news this time around we're going to be dealing with powers of the hive mind big issue for many people lack of biomancy i don't know how much pissing and moaning i've heard about that it's a lot uh powers of the hive mind again i guess i'm different I think they're better than uh, Biomancy. Yes, I know, I know, I know people are going to disagree. I don't think so. I think there's a reason, I think there's a reason they created six specific powers just for the Tyranid instead of using a list of generic powers that anybody is supposed to be using. And the idea that those six specific powers are somehow going to be worse off for the army than the six generic ones. It's a hard argument to make, uh, but apparently people are trying to make it. A lot of them. So let's go over them. You got uh, Dominion, which is the, the uh, prime power. Okay. Catalyst. Um, the Horror. Onslaught. Paroxium. And... Is it Warp Blast? Ah, Psychic Scream and Warp Blast. And the last two are my favorite, which I will go into in the end. Uh, so basically, a quick rundown on them before I talk about tactics on them. Dominion, the primary one, probably the most useful one, uh, basically extends Synapse Range by six inches, making every giving, giving everybody a chance to be a linchpin, a hive linchpin. How can that not be useful? Uh, Catalyst. In fact, you know what? Now that I think about it, all of the hive mind powers are my favorite in one way or another because you, you just can't argue with them. Okay? Catalyst gives a target with it is a blessing that gives a target unit within 12 inches the feel no pain rule. I, how much do you have to describe about that? Do I have to describe tactics for how to use Feel No Pain? I think most people have a pretty good idea how useful that is inherently. Um, the Horror, okay, that's a little more complicated, mostly used by the Gem Stealers, which is why the Broodlord gets it automatically. Gives a automatic pinning test to go to ground as a malediction, not as a targeted hit, um, with negative two leadership. And before in some other videos, I said 18 inches. I'm correcting myself now. It's 24 inches. So if you want to go for infiltrating Gene Steeler Army and they all have Brood Lords, that's six the horror rolls. Six of them. 24 inches. Remember, you can set up infiltrated units 18 inches away in line of sight, 12 inches away out of line of sight. So 24 inches, or if they walk up on the side of the table, it's really nice. Combine that with uh, some other leadership handicapping, debuffing abilities like Shadow in the Warp uh, or, or It's After Me, and... Very good control army with Gene Stealers. Locking down armies, locking down Harlequins, locking down Eldar, locking down Dark Eldar, locking down anybody who's just being annoying. Uh, which is their main protection from being shot at in the first turn. When they come on the table from reserve or whatever. <clears throat> Onslaught. Again, specifically for the Nids and fantastic. What does it do? What does it do? What does it do? This one basically allows you to move and shoot. No, I'm sorry. This one allows you to pick a unit within 24 inches and it can run and still shoot. Sounds deceptively simple, but imagine 30 knots. Okay, and they move, they shoot, and they run, or the other way around. They run, and they still shoot, and due to them all being assault weapons, then assault, and they have fleet. 
who talk about getting across the table quickly or how about if you're infiltrating or um, outflanking well you wouldn't be running well you could run yes and still shoot wow I mean how many possibilities exist there with that uh, next we go to paraxium paraxium is 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 a fun one if you like to see your enemy army squirm and who doesn't want to see that so paraxium another malediction again no targeting shooting ones until we get down to warp last which basically says a single enemy unit in 24 inches has its ballistic skill and weapon skill reduced by a d3 so if reducing their leaderships is not good enough for you you can pick a unit and reduce their weapon skill and ballistic skill by d3 you know what this means this means that whatever unit those 30 knots are charging into if they're a standard troop unit at orc boys or something like that they're gone they're, they're gone uh, the whole unit is going to go down you you give those guys toxin sacks uh, with poison hits and re-rolling on the wounds uh, this is also, of course, very helpful for all of those people complaining about the Carnifexes and all the many of the other monstrous creatures having Ballistic Skill 3, Weapon Skill 3. This is one of the main reasons for that. Because you can just target the unit there and say, boom, D3 down. Which, let's assume it's worse. The worst you can get is their Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill goes down. So 4-4 four, four becomes a 3-3, three, 5-5 three, five, five becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Just, just think about it now we get to my actual two i know they're all my favorites but these two i have a special special place for in my heart yes uh psychic scream taken from the eldar given to the tyranids basically yeah it's basically mind war it's the old mind war but now the tyranids have it hey they actually have they have an improved version of it because they have these massive leadership debuffs that they have in effect it's a nova auto hit witch fire which means six inches in every direction around the unit you roll you make a leadership roll the unit makes a leadership roll um add two to the dice and take a total number of wounds to the unit in it as the difference uh, i believe in one of my other posts uh or actually it was in a comment in one of the other posts on another video where i said there was a fortunate role where i was able well actually not that fortunate it was a pretty it was a pretty average role uh i was fighting gray knights and they they do what gray knights do they charged um my tyrant in one of the first games that I played and boom deep strike charge uh, and the next turn psychic scream well they didn't charge but you know what I mean psychic scream went off I had both of them within six inches two units one on either side of me they had I think they had four models and one had three models so it, it, it doesn't take that much when you're rolling 2d6 plus 2 they had minus 3 off of their leaderships to do 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 wounds of damage to the each squad no saves no nothing they just die they just they just die they landed they shot the net and then they died um that was that was a learning experience for the Grey Knights, and uh, the one time that I really understood that bam, uh, Grey Knights, if you see Tyranids, just just quit. There's there's really yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know what what counter Grey Knights can think of for Tyranids that that the, they are just so handicapped against them. Uh, and then, of course, there's Warp Blast. And everybody knows Warp Blast. It's the exact same Warp Blast as the Zoanthropes have. But if you roll a 6 on your Psychic Powers, 
any psychic unit, it's a charge too, but any, any, they can use it. It just turns them into an uber, uber zoanthrope, uh, which is what? It's a, one is a burst, so that's a range 24, strength 5, AP 3, assault 1, blast, or you can fire it as the lance, 18 inch, strength 10, AP 2, assault 1, lance, Lance, so that means, hello, Land Raiders, uh, you only have a 12, 12 armor now. What is there to say? I mean, I mean I'm, I'm really puzzled how anybody could read through these powers and say, you know what? Biomancy was more useful. Uh, I just wow why why don't I have biomancy because these things these things I just can't figure out anything to do with these things it's I don't I don't know they, they, to me they seem like the most useful psychic powers in the game I mean yeah the Eldar have some fun stuff where oh they help you they buff your units they or they hurt the other units very nice very fancy but it's so much simpler just to roll a die and say that unit has um, feel no pain. 24 inches. Boom. Okay. No must, no fuss, no explaining, no looking up in the rules to understand what this special psychic power is that you have. Everybody understands it. It makes the game so much faster and so much easier. And psychic scream, like I said, the old, the old mind war just revisited it's mind war 2.0 um just by by seer council uh by drago and your terminators by any greater demons that that of zinch or slanesh or anybody that's using psychic powers just by uh as far as I can see. Um, yeah, you can talk about Deny the Witch and things like that, but it, it, it just seems like you can you can just hurt a whole lot of very strong specialist units very quickly. And that's all going to be done before the hand-to-hand -hand and, and fun stuff like that when you get stuck in. Uh, that's my quick rundown on the Hive Mind powers like i said you don't really have to um talk too much about tactics with them because everybody already knows what they are and most people already know how to use them onslaught is the only one that i would say takes a little getting used to uh but when you really see uh, a unit uh, or like ravners even uh just fly across the table and shoot and run and assault it's, 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 for me, it's a nice sight. For them, I, I, or a nice imagining, I haven't done it yet, but I can imagine it happening. Uh, for other people, I can think that's pretty scary. Anyways, I hope you like this. I hope you found it useful. And uh, please feel free to leave comments and subscribe uh, with anything else you'd like to know about the 6th uh, edition Tiernets. Thank you very much.